In the beginning, we focused on a video-centric interface. Our first concept was the TeleTV video wall, which proposed multiple video hotspots. On the second day, we presented a simplified version of the video wall browser. On the third day, the L model was created. The user tabbed up and down through a sidebar of selections. On the fourth day, we established rapid prototyping, working through a variety of highlighting conventions. Most importantly, we shifted the layout from the L model to the current T-shaped browser. We also tried shifting the position of the highlight box from bottom to middle to top, utilizing larger highlighted icons. We began considering moving between more active and passive browsing as well. Following these earlier prototypes, we worked closely with English and Pocket to combine these two designs, creating more robust versions of the passive video wall and the active browsing environment. The wall wide web behind us represents the finished screen throughout the EPG and Galaxy. On the fifth and sixth days, we polished these designs. We also met with the system's programmers to determine the best designs technically possible. We then carefully storyboarded and animated the major transitions between these screens to illustrate the EPG and Galaxy in full motion. Let's take a look at how robust this design has become. From regular broadcast television, I tuned to the electronic programming guide by pressing the guide button on my TeleTV remote control. We arrive at the half-screen EPG, which also shows Galaxy movie promos here I can tab left and right, and up and down, using the arrow keys on my remote. To see more channel listings off screen, I press guide again to see the full screen guide. I can tab down to find the channel I want. I tune to CNN by pressing the center select button on the remote, marked by the TeleTV logo, and a channel hat appears for a few seconds to display the channel and program identification. The EPG also provides detailed program information. I press Info on my remote, and an information box appears on screen, giving a summary and relevant information. I press the Info button, Back or Cancel, to dismiss the box. I can select a Galaxy movie from the main EPG through a few different methods. As I begin entering the shortcut numbers for Malcolm X, the highlight jumps to the top left of the grid. I press select and the grid advances to my galaxy selection. If we press select again, we'll be connected to the galaxy and to the buy screen for Malcolm X. However, I press back, returning me to the earlier highlighted program selection in the guide. Here, I will explore another method of ordering a galaxy movie within the EPG. I press the focus button on my remote control. This prompts the highlight to jump up to the top menu bar where I can tab right or left. I tab over and press on the galaxy guide. As I tab up and down through the list, I can press info for information or press select to connect to the buy screen for Malcolm X in the galaxy. I'll go to the galaxy in a moment. There are more special features in the EPG. From the Galaxy Guide, I press Focus to tab over the top menu bar, Themes. A submenu appears listing the preset categories such as movies, sports, kids, etc. Under each of these topics is a list of all current program selections that fall under that category. I press the Focus button again to move from the list to the submenu or from the submenu to the top menu. Tabbing over to select Setup brings down another submenu. This lists options for personalizing my guide. In Preferred Audio, I can select a different language to listen to where broadcast. In Channel Lock, I can set certain channels to be accessed through pin entry only. And in Set Favorite, I can create customized guides of the channels I watch the most. Favorite guides appear in the top menu bar along with the main guide option, which we'll return to. 
Now let's go back to regular television to demonstrate connecting to and browsing in the galaxy. We'll begin navigating the galaxy itself to demonstrate passive and active browsing and the transitions between these modes. Straight from the regular broadcast television, I can connect to the galaxy by pressing the galaxy button on my remote. The galaxy gateway screen appears. I confirm my connection to the galaxy by selecting Yes. A latency spotlight animation masks the transition while the server connection is made. At the end of the latency, the spotlights stop and the red curtain raises to reveal the first movie environment, an MPEG video stream of pre-selected short previews. This is the passive browsing environment. To select any of the movies presented to me in the passive browser, I press the select button on my remote during its preview. Let's select Malcolm X. The MPEG promos pause and the blue curtains close. The flashing TeleTV logo is another latency animation. The curtains open again to reveal the buy screen from Malcolm X. Here, we can also watch the full-length movie preview. I press Select to Buy and Select again to confirm my purchase. The curtains close with the flashing latency animation and the movie begins. To leave the passive drama clips and to go to passive family clips, I can press either Focus or the right arrow key. The highlight goes back up to the menu bar and I tab right to bring family into the highlight box. I select clips to continue passive browsing. After a brief latency, the curtains open to reveal the preset short previews for family movies. Again, I can order any of these movies by pressing select during the preview. Now to active browsing in list mode. To search more quickly, I press the focus button on my remote and select list from the submenu. This will enable active browsing in the drama environment. Now, I can tab quickly up and down through all the list titles as a still flash is on screen for each film. However, I press focus to tab over to family, again selecting list in the submenu. The list of family titles animates down and I can tab and select. Here's Malcolm X again. Note that I get to the same buy screen from active as in passive. Once I've begun watching a movie, I can use the VCR controls on the remote. Fast forward, rewind, stop, and pause. I can also place mark a movie where I've paused and return to regular television. If I return to the galaxy any time within the next 24 hours, I can pick up watching the movie where I left off. From regular television, I press Galaxy on the remote, and before I enter the galaxy, a place mark screen appears. From here, I can choose any place marked movie and be connected right back to it. Or at the place mark screens, I can select to go back to the galaxy and we'll connect back to the passive drama mode. If I need help navigating in the galaxy, I can press the help button at any time. The help screen appears in the same location in the passive clips, the active list, and in the buy screen. It provides a customer service phone number or a shortcut number that will connect me to a help tour video. If I want more information about a movie, I can press the Info button on my remote. Again, the Info boxes animate up in the same location on screen as the Help boxes in Passive, Active, and Buy. And here is one last purchase option in the TeleTV Galaxy. From the top menu categories, I can also select Deals. Here my pull-down list displays both predefined and undefined packages. I select Choose Any Three and buy it for three discounted movie tokens. The next time I want to see Malcolm X, I can use one of my tokens to buy the movie. 
Continuous refinement of the preceding elements of the EPG and Galaxy could not have been achieved without the feedback from ongoing usability tests. I really like that. <laughs>